entertain a motion to for the minutes of last month. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Uh, Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I, oh no, I can't. You can. you can vote. I know, but I shouldn't. The the Secretary of State says you can't. I know, but Tom, you know my ethics are unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> We have the director's report and yeah. uh, work off of that. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. Oh, it's nice to see everybody. Uh, let's see, updates on staffing. Uh, three of our existing personnel, two full time, one per diem. We're paramedics, they upgraded to, or excuse me, we're EMT basics since got their paramedics. So they're in the upgrade process right now. It's going along well um, for the three people that previously haven't worked as paramedics. The process is a lot longer because there's a lot more mentoring that's going on, but that's progressing. Um, and it culminates with them personally meeting with our medical director one-on-one um, -on -one and getting, getting a personal sign up. So that's moving along. And then we have two new per diem paramedics who are experienced um, working in high volume services and already have medical control through another doctor. So the process for them is much more abbreviated. So they're coming in on Monday. Um, I'm gonna be doing probably six hours worth of orientation on Monday together and that's equipment familiarization, policy and procedure familiarization, and kind of area familiarization. From there, they'll break off with our individual mentors and uh, ride third and then they'll get sent, signed off also individually by our medical director. But that process typically only takes about a month or two. Um, so this will give us more flexibility, Zach? Yeah, yeah, that's, oh, this yeah, that's absolutely the idea, yep. Do you want to tell us who they are or not sure? Uh, yeah, uh, Brian Pro and um, Carly Eaton, um, both uh, Greenfield paramedic graduates working down in the Springfield area come highly recommended. So um, they're excited to start, we're excited to have them um, with us and they're already friends or have worked professionally with a lot of people on our staff so um, it's and a couple uh, that just passed the paramedic yes uh, well that's um, Alicia Zronig um, Aliyah Kusmal who were both full-time employees um, and then Eric Drumgool mm -hmm. um, his brother uh, Tim Drumgool is a full-time employee with us Eric Drumgool also graduated from the paramedic program and he actually worked today I just saw him on his way out um, sure he wasn't his brother. They, they I, no, I can tell him apart. Yeah, uh, identical twins. Yeah, oh, really? uh, yeah, identical. Yeah. Um, when they're both on the same truck, I often worry about you know yeah. what the patients think. Sure. <laughs> Are you seeing double? <laughs> yes, right. Right. Um, um, so congratulations to him. Great. Yeah, it's yes. great. That's great. That's great. That's very nice. And welcome aboard for the other two. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I I'm really happy that that will help address our um, overtime. Yep, and um, we have uh, we have some new uh, per diem EMT basics who are new to the area who just applied. So um, we'll oh, be exactly. we'll be going really through wonderful. that process as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's mm -hmm. it's great. So so um, that gives us how many people then? I mean, forty. You said forty uh, something. Yeah, thirty-eight or forty-two. Some, somewhere in there, I can't remember the exact roster. I mean, we've had some people leave and some people come as of July 1, so mm -hmm. don't quote me on that exact number, right around 40. Well, that's really good. Quite yeah. good. Yeah. That is excellent. Yeah. It's really excellent, so thank you, Zach. I uh, appreciate you addressing this. And yeah. Working on yeah. Um, outreach, so we did the Conway 250th, um, and by we did, I mean we went up and did standby so their personnel could participate in the festivities. Um, we were there to cover any EMS calls that they might have in town and also any sort of accidents or illnesses that might occur at the celebration. We didn't do any calls while we were up there, um, but we yeah. you know, did get some hot dogs and some hamburgers and um, we actually did some outreach too. We, we set up the ambulance um, in a central location, but it happened to be with all the other Conway um, fire apparatus. So we had a lot of people come through and we gave tours of the ambulance. And we made it really clear that it was Conway's town and the yeah. South County, but um, it was a nice opportunity to see some people who live in Deerfield, Sunderland, and Whaley who came up for the celebration. So um, nice opportunity. The Hard Knocks exercise, which is occurring later this year, which is the large scale emergency training 
thing on the federal level that involves multidisciplinary approach, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure Carolyn has mm -hmm. talked about it extensively. Uh, the medical providers, South County EMS, and I believe sure. Conway and Medcare might be the only ones that have dedicated involvement. But we're gonna be meeting tomorrow morning at the hospital. Yeah. So I'll be meeting with them to kind of figure out, hash out what our expectations are, what we expect to um, get out of that exercise. There's been a lot of planning going on, kind of big picture stuff, so we're gonna start boiling it down to the EMS dis discipline specifically. Right. Uh, yeah, so that's tomorrow well, morning. The, I just wanna say that um, at the LEPC meeting, or I mean at the REPC meeting, um, they approved temporary, uh, what did we say, we approved the working document, is right, Bobby? Okay, so we approved the working um, MCI um, plan, and I, I really, that's the mass casualty incident plan, and I, I really want to make sure that you, we have the opportunity to practice that. That's why I'm going to that meeting too. Great. At the hospital, so um, hopefully um, we can sort that out and, and make sure, because it, it's one thing to have everybody agree to the plan, but if no one has ever exercised it mm -hmm. or drilled it, I mean, we don't know if it really works. Right. So right. this is a huge opportunity. So I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that I hope the board supports this. Absolutely. And, um, and I appreciate Zach being involved. And I was going to ask because, I mean, the REPC voted to um, approve this document. I thought, you know, Zach, it's only quarterly meetings, but maybe, you know, there's like no EMS people mm -hmm. at the table. So I, I was hoping maybe once in a while you could come to those meetings. Sure. The next one is in October. There was an EMS representative on that committee, was my understanding. I don't know. I, that I know clearly may have changed since the last time I attended a meeting. No one's but gone for a long time. Okay. Because I usually go, and there's sure. not usually there. Yeah, I think the president of the Franklin County EMT Association. He's like the de facto representative. Yeah, he's to been to a couple of meetings. Uh, yeah, I really personally good. know the president of the yeah. Franklin County EMT, so I will, I will talk to him and, and ask you know, if, if their committee has a representative they've selected or whether it's, it's totally vacant. Well, um, but either way, I'll make sure to attend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe just if he isn't going to call, he could call you and yeah. you could right. go as an alternate or something. Yeah. I just feel like the EMS services should be represented, and, and you are pretty line. sharp, and, and I would really, it would be, I think it would behoove us to be involved, because whatever incident happens, I mean, any hazmat incident that happens in the entire county, we would, under the MCI plan and the other, your regular documented stuff, you would be involved. I mean, they would call us, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like it would make sense to do that. And um, I also feel comfortable that you kind of know what's going on. Yeah, you thank could, you. You, could, you, would, you don't have a problem speaking up if it doesn't sound right. And that's why it was kind of weird to have this, everybody approve this plan and there was no, like, no EMT person there. Yeah, I, I like, think, speaking of that plan specifically, I think it went down to the EMS committee for... It did, and they responded with no questions, so okay. they didn't have any concerns about it. Good. That's what they said at our meeting. Okay. Okay. I just, I can't imagine though never having any input. I don't have any questions, but maybe that's me. I'm just always cranky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I can't imagine that somebody would come up with a plan and never, I, I never have any comments. I mean, that seems bizarro. But that was why I wanted you. Sure. Just to review it anyway. I'd appreciate it. And, that, yeah. and if we practice it, the, and when we did the after action report, and you had actually participated in it, then you would be able to give feedback. Is this legit? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sure. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you, Zach. Um, obviously, uh, love it or hate it, social media is a huge part of our world nowadays, especially for public agencies. Uh, we've had a uh, Facebook presence for quite some time. I mean, it starts off basically as People are going to check in. People are going to, you know, have fan pages. If you don't start one for your own agency, somebody else will start one for you, and you won't have any control over it. So it started as that, um, and has kind of migrated into a way to disseminate information, just like the code red. But like exit 24 was closed today on 91 northbound. So as a way for people who follow us or are familiar with the department of Facebook to get that information out, um, we also. Uh, 
include photographs of staff and um, typically accident scenes where you can't identify owners of vehicles, there's no patients involved or things like that. Those are always, you know, like, like you'd see in the newspaper type mm -hmm. thing. Um, those are uploaded just because people are curious, they want to see what we're doing, those action shots are really compelling. Um, and they're always uploaded without a description to the individual or the circumstances and at a random time at least two and a half weeks after the incident. So um, even for the keen ones out there who think they might be able to listen to a scanner and, and figure out what the pictures are from, we, we make a point to uh, not do that. Um, but right now that Facebook page is the only thing we have. And there are a lot of people that are going to the respective town websites and trying to find information or even just our location or our phone number or our fax number, things like that. So to get ahead of that, I recently acquired um, a South County EMS domain name. There's nothing up there yet, but the idea being kind of a, a jumping off point where, um, you know, personnel, uh, our mission, our story, things like that, something for the public, a front door for them to come to. Also. Um, a backdoor for our own staff because we have multiple websites and servers that we use for our own in-house stuff. So mm -hmm. we'll one, um, one stop shop for them to be able to access our scheduling and our um, sure. patient record links and things like that. Um, and hopefully my plan would be to also be able to upload minutes or other pertinent documents, um, the studies and things like that because people will often reach out to me and say, hey, do you have copies of this or copies of that? It'd be nice to have um, right. one place where they can um, find that information. Who's going to administer the website for you? Uh, right now, it's just a volunteer thing, and it's me. <laughs> yeah, but websites, if people are going to really use them, they, yeah. and no offense. No, I get it, and, I, and I don't, I'm not a website administrator. It, it, it's it's got to be timely. It's got to be yeah. visually appealing. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Otherwise, it's just a site that no one looks at. Right. Well, in, in the very least, my plan is to at least have a site. Um, you know, it's like when you try to go to a, a restaurant, you find out what their hours are on the name of a website. You know, it's like at least a place where here's our phone number, you know, yep. here's how to get a right. of us, here's our location. Mm -hmm. um, look at the I, administration later, you think? Well, no, I sort of wonder because I don't know about Sunderland, but I know that Deerfield and Waitley use the same um, web administrator company. And I'm wondering whether we could just use a page from that, and it could be on the Deerfield server. I mean, who cares which one? Right. Create it so use the same domain name. Right. But then when people click on that, they just go to redirects. It redirects to either the Deerfield or the Wayland. Right. And again, if so someone who, who cares? Right. And and then because it's a town function, the people who created the site for both of our towns would just add another page because that's part of their contract. So then Zach's not spending hours on something that he's not skilled at. Right. And these guys are skilled at it. It would have the right skin for our towns. For mobile, for yeah. For whatever. And I and I just think that if if, if we can redirect it, it's gonna be easier for him, it's gonna be more presentable, it, it's gonna be updated on, on a more regular basis. The town administrator Executive, executive assistants or whomever mm -hmm. would probably have access so that they can make quick changes. Again, because he's got a full-time job, right. and sometimes the timeliness suffers when somebody's doing it and it's not their primary function. So I just think we should look that into might, that. That might Sounds do well because um, Wendy is hiring. You know, our executive assistant has been empty for months, and. Um, their whole job, or one of the main parts of the job, is to handle social media. So. This isn't social media. This no, would, this I know, would be but right. The website and all the yeah, all the electronic media. Yeah, mm -hmm. all everything. I because our I'm, website is terrible. Right. <laughs> we have we're, we're updating it. We're switching. You're not using back. the same one as Whaley does. No, uh, uh, I think we do. Sure. But yeah, because we, I mean, the ones we looked at, every it's like how how can we have such a junky, awful? We need a nice presence. Presence when, when because other towns have the same company and they have it so much better. I don't know the name off the top yeah, of my head. Virtual Town Hall. Virtual Town Hall. Yeah, I think you're right. Because I, I don't know you, how you guys feel about it, Tom, but we love them. They're, the, the website is. Well, and I, and I got do changed. this. I mean, I, I, yeah. it's marketing. Yeah. And it's really good. Good. Well, well, we just maybe had to make some tweaks. Work. But it sounds like you need some. But it worked before. So, 
I think it got changed when we had a transition in the. So maybe temporarily, it could, it could just sit on the Waitley or with the Waitley one, mm -hmm. or or Sunderland. I don't care who, yeah, but right. let's not waste Zach's time. But let's have a real strong web presence. I agree. And 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 do it that way because they'll do. They'll just add a new page. Right. Yeah, but if it, if we all have virtual town hall, can't that all be clicked? From right. our town hall. You could have a page on each other, on each other yeah. one, yeah. and it's the same one. And it goes right yeah. to that right. page. Yeah. Right. It doesn't, because no one cares yeah. where the thing sits. Exactly. But right. it should be able to do access. it on all three. Yeah. 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 That's what, yeah. So, I mean. That's great. I'm just saying that right now ours is junky. Right. Well, let's not wait for Deerfield yeah. to get up to right. speed. Let's do it. If you do, yeah. we've got some new in the way, we get it on and. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out. Um. Because thanks I, for I doing agree. that, Zach. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been my plan for a while, and I actually noticed since 2014 that the South County EMS scams, the, all those related URLs have st have been disappearing since 2014, so I jumped on one now. There was another. Still, like, yeah. yeah. Um, and, right, so let's, looking forward to having something. Right. That's okay. okay. Yeah. I'm a sunny Brian email right now. All right. Uh, the uh, power load stretchers. Um, the first one came with the, the new ambulance, and then we also um, used retained earnings to bring the other two ambulances up to that standard. They're being upfitted right now as we speak. Um, that involves both the equipment that gets installed into the ambulance as well as the stretchers themselves. Um, they just needed to be upgraded. We're reusing the same stretchers, but there's a couple pieces of electronic that needs to um, yeah. go in there. The, one truck has already gone down and come back, um, has been installed, the other truck is being installed now, and the stretcher upgrade will be occurring at our station um, first thing Monday morning. So until then, um, we're down to that one transporting ambulance, our secondary ambulance is available as a first response vehicle, um, and our staff and shelter control knows that that's where we are for resources just for the next couple of days, so. And you think uh, by, by Monday or Tuesday that'll be good? Yeah, by Monday morning everything should be back. When do you send it, send it for, uh, for work? Where do they do that? Um, that's the uh, New England Fire oh. Equipment. It's where we purchased our most recent annual oh, ones. Okay. They're certified installers by... In Springfield? Um, no, they're actually in North Haven, Connecticut. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But um, they have a, a large... They do fire trucks, ambulances, rescue yeah. trucks, and they're um, certified installers for this equipment. So um, Stryker, the company that makes the equipment, says, yeah, we trust them to do yeah. it. Safety, all that stuff, we don't want to be concerned. So, um, yeah. Uh, facility update. Um, I actually, after this went to press, I got some more information um, on the facility. Um, groundbreaking is expected to occur next month, okay. um, mid to late August is the expectation. And I will be meeting um, with their representative um, soon in the very near future, just to kind of hash out exactly what we can expect when we open that door. Great. Um, I think it, they might have um, a couple last minute things that they want to just tell us about, but other than that, so from there we'll have a better idea about, you know, what what's going to be our responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to break ground next month, um, and then we've already discussed using the retained earnings, you know, marking that for um, accoutrements. Um, we've also, I've also discussed with um, our staff about them pitching in, um, either through an association or something like that, for items that they may want um, in the facility that might be more specific to personnel related stuff. Um, and I was also planning on uh, reaching out to local businesses, say a Home Depot or a Lowe's that might yeah. be willing to donate a refrigerator or something like that. Um, for idea. our staff, so, good idea. Um, but that's good idea. yeah, um, that's going to kind of come down. What do we need to get, and then let's start, you know, sectioning it off about where those things are going to come from. Are we going to be in by winter? I, that's my hope. But I don't want to hope. I I don't. Hopefully, I'll hopefully if, I, you know if, I'll have a if, word. If we're not, all the people from Deerfield who came to watch these meetings for two years mm -hmm. to push this should come back because. It, you're going to be parking a truck outside, and it's going to we're going to have the same conversation as we did last yeah. winter right. about keeping stuff at 55 degrees or whatever they are, and that's not effective. So if we're not in by winter, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of conversations sure. going on about the mismanagement of this. 
Sure. It just I, that's the the plain and simple fact. My understanding from DA is that they're piggybacking they're building a new physical plant up there and they're picking back the construction of that. You know, so they have a tight time frame for that. I I'll ask the question when I see them. My understanding is the plan has always been, you know, by winter that we will be able to move. I'm in. very grateful for all they're doing. And for the time they're doing it. Oh. Speaking of, our OEMS inspection, um, without a hitch, came by, inspected our three ambulances, and we've uh, already received our um, new licenses for the next year. One concern that was raised by the inspector, which we knew was going to be raised, was the issue of housing, in that we have three separate um, facilities, and when our staff goes from one to the other, one truck has to be outside for that time being. Um, and so he brought it up during the inspection just saying, regulation state it's supposed to be you know, controlled and, and our staff knows to monitor the temperature inside the truck and secure everything. So we're, you know, we're taking steps to make sure that we're not in violation, but um, it was brought up. But hopefully that'll be remedied in the not too distant future. Town of Deerfield, uh, which all of South County EMS employees are technically employees of, um, adopted the new classification compensation plan for FY18, which started July 1st. And I worked with Wendy to make sure that the transition um, between the old comp plan and the new comp plan uh, went smoothly. So I met with her, looked at everybody's FY17 rates, translated it into what it would equal in FY18, and we've made that transition. Um, and everything seems hunky-dory. Uh, my FY17, last July 2016, my raise was um, approved by the Deerfield Select Board and made retroactive, so I appreciate that. Uh, just under the wire for FY17. Um, the discussion I had with the town administrator regarding that and that whole process is, you know, what, what's the role of the BOO, and if the BOO's role is to recommend or not recommend um, raises for employees of the department, um, all employees, just the director, things like that. How does that work with the select board in town? And basically for FY18 starting July 1st, I stayed at my FY17 rate um, with the anticipation that the BOO will either make a recommendation or we'll figure out um, whether South County EMS employees fall under the comp plan period or whether the Board of Oversight plays a role in those decisions. That was really wordy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if uh, the Board of Oversight should be doing your evaluation, and the evaluation then forms a recommendation to the select board. A strong and, recommendation to the select board. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, just a recommendation. And under good faith, the select board, you know, we participate, and Deerfield participates in the recommendation, so if it comes out of there, then, you know, it's... But to Zach's mind. question, what about his staff? Um, he would do the staff. He, he the does staff. the staff, that's what I'm yeah. Him. And, and the staff, he does the staff, and that is reflected as part of the comp plan, right? Now, I mean, that all got sorted out, right, Zach? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, okay. just the, the standard practice within the time I mean, you're field. into the comp plan. Yes, now. yeah, okay. right, so yes, So now that yes. they're in the yes. comp plan. Everybody, including myself, is in the comp plan, yeah. And, and now that everyone's in the comp plan, when the comp plan is updated, that gets updated. I, I would just suggest that under the guise of strong communication, <clears throat> if the plan is going to recommend real strong salary increases because of that's the oh, plan oh, I see. in terms of budgeting, in terms of, be, in ter ter terms of individual towns being able to stomach the hit, um, that it would it, it, it not be a presented as here it is, but it'd be presented as how are you guys going to? Um, I, think the, I think the comp plan is only 90 cents per this year, but next year, I mean, it, it think those things can change. I mean, yeah. I, I no, just I, think I, that I, it. Yeah, I get it. <clears throat> well, 
we were also thinking of um, you know breaking it out and being separate because as part of the our comp plan it's a little out of skew for some of the you know because it's amount of supervisory you know elements and all kinds of stuff in the comp plan that tells you where you are in the comp plan and so before South County or before Deerfield EMS was a separate schedule and so it got rolled in or was in the process of getting rolled in and so we thought maybe if it was going to be hard to stay competitive then we might have to have it rolled out again so I don't know but that's down the line right now we're all set for this year. Mr. Chair may I ask a question? Go ahead. Our South County employees are considered Deerfield employees correct? How does a Deer town of Deerfield employee get a, a raise? They get a satisfactory a sat evaluation. So we, I would assume, act those evaluations. If they come back satisfactory, they get their their raise. Their staff, yeah. Zach's evaluation is done by this committee. It, if it comes back satisfactory, it's not even going to the Deerfield Board of Selectmen. It's going right to your personal committee or whoever, and and they're going to be treated no differently than. Is Every other employee. So right. why, why do we have all this conversation? Well, well the problem was, is, is that the salary steps. changes didn't fit into the compensation plan. And as I understand it now, Zach is at the top level. And that if this board offers no, he's a raise, seven. Yeah. 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 he's at number seven. Step I understand seven. that. But what I'm saying is that the last time it didn't fit within the compensation schedule because the dollar amounts to be. Yeah, but now we're all squared away, right? Yeah. We are for now. Yeah. But if this board should recommend a dollar amount that doesn't fit into the compensation plan, we'd be right back in the same boat we were in before. What it was was the, it was yeah. multi-steps. And, and understand. It was multi-steps. And, 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 and understand, my only, the only reason that, that we, we screwed up as a board because we had no idea when we hired a director what an appropriate salary was. In, in my opinion, that that was that was our fault. Um, we didn't know. We didn't know, and and I, I think now that you're on the schedule, it, there shouldn't be any more. It shouldn't be any more. It was just right. getting. It was just getting to that point. I think we're there now. I think, and I and I think you know we have a valuation process, a valuation process we go through, and I, I would expect our director not to be treated any different than any other. Right. It's pretty to me. It's a pretty simple process. Yeah, that can Thank, right? Oh yeah, no, yeah. Not, now that he's like worked it. into the schedule. And it was it, just the multi-steps that was... Well, there was something that happened that I'm not going to bring up, but where, where salaries got adjusted through bonus programs, I never knew how, how bonuses happened. Um, I, I don't envision that coming up on the table in school again, is there? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, so let's, let's Zach, I don't think we need to talk about that I think we're past that. Let's let's go to new stuff. Let's go to exciting stuff. How how are we going to get that place outfitted? How how are we going to how are we going to bring more people from the community to get them involved in the South County EMS? That's what I want to talk about. We're we're talking about the same things over, and we're beating them to death. Let, let's let's try to find out how how we're going to reach out to the communities and, and let them know what we're doing. Those are, that's what we should be looking at. Well, that's what I, I want us to set some goals and how we're going to get there and logistics of the move. I mean, there we have to set up, I, I mean, I'm assuming Service. we have to set up, uh, you know, I, internet service and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, so the, the phone system has, yeah. to, has to connect with the rest of the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's not necessarily easy. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not hugely complicated. No, but, but it it's not, you've got to pay attention. Right. Yeah. And that's why I wanted us to talk about, because some of that stuff needs to get sorted out before you actually, I mean, the build, uh, the building will be built in a timely mm -hmm. manner. And I mean, the contractor they have hired is good. And even though we don't know very much about it, the, you know, the, they, are on, they are on time up there and they want their building done before school starts. So I would assume that the focus would come back to us, you know, once, um, they do the ground, and I know they were looking at parking places, more additional parking, and I, that, that got yeah, sorted out. I, okay, I just learned about this today that the South Deerfoot Fire District raised concerns about 
parking availability right. and, and who is going to so, park where. Um, so, so there will be additional parking um, put into the plan, and um, you know, so all that's getting sorted out. And so, um, it seems like it's on schedule, and I, I trust uh, Dick Kalashevsky is you know trying to pay attention to all that. And, yeah, and he's yeah. the one that you know calculated so that parking and sorted that out. So. There is good conversation between him and Deerfield Academy, so I, I'm assuming it will get good. So if we have, you know, a December-ish date, I mean, what do we need to do to get organized to move in do by need, December? Do we need a small thing? You brought up, you know, a few months back, putting together a small committee to discuss what, you know, what what we think we're going to need, what we know we're going to need, what we're not quite sure, and then kind of get some budgets together and figure out. What we could do, I think we should constitute a small building committee to yep. figure that out. I think that was the contract is going to come back and start asking questions. Pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, you want somebody to be able to have conversation with and give immediate answers to. Mm -hmm. And and you were talking about an association setting up some kind of association. That's very simple to set up a five a five hundred one c three, but. You do have to do the paperwork. Yeah, right. And and so. Well, I have somebody on my go, staff with experience doing that. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so where does the where does who how does that cost get? There's a cost to that. Um, it's just a filing fee. It's an eight hundred dollar filing fee, depending upon well, the revenue. I'm just saying, I I I, I filed you can get a dozen them. of them in my life. Okay. Well, sometimes you can get somebody to volunteer to do it, but if no, if it's, we it's an IRS fee. Okay. I, I'm just I'm just making sure that we have things budgeted appropriately. Okay, but I mean, it might if we're going to ask for donations, then they would want to donate to, you know. Are you talking about people that are going to donate things? I, I would suggest the using teams. a current nonprofit organization, using their C three as a as as. Well, the town has. I mean, you can use any of our towns. The town gift account. Yeah. I would suggest doing that rather than setting up a, a separate okay. organization. Okay. All right. Well, Zach was talking about an association. So it, that's a long-term thing then, and we can use the temporary gift account, whatever. But I, if you're going to do something like that, Zach, it makes sense to do that. And sometimes, like I said, you can get that donated because I've set up a few of them myself. And there are a couple nice people out there that do those kind of things. And I'm not talking about the legal, but I'm talking about the check you write to the Internal Revenue Service. I know, I know. We were just very fortunate that we had the lawyer that was willing to do that. The conservation district. The lawyer, the IRS. Yeah. But your uh, run, yeah. run so far this year is set. You know, right up there. Um, I don't have the. Do you have the number? I do. I have it here. Yeah, we're uh, we're chugging right along, right? Yep. Look at you with that right there. Um, so for the first six months. 591 calls total. We always see kind of an uptick in the summer months, so, um, but we're right on on track for what I anticipate being in the 900s again um, this coming year. Um, I don't have the breakdown, but it's still high percentage of is ALS calls, not because we're over treating patients, but because we have the ability to treat them at the level that um, they deserve, so uh, we're doing good. Um, Intercept's not doing too many of those uh, recently, so it's not a tax or anything on our department, um, as well as mutual aid, um, not a tax um, on our department as far as that goes either, so. How's that going on revenue in terms of budget, the plan for revenue stream? Because that's a revenue for us, obviously. Um, yeah, our total revenue is based on an estimation of our total calls, and we're on track for an estimation of total calls. So the fact that we aren't doing that many intercepts, it's, it's not, it's not going to affect our revenue projections negatively. Well, I really? I was going to. Well, I, I would suggest that you don't put intercepts in there, anyways. That in, in that way, you you'd be conservatively putting your numbers together. If you right. if right. you figure on intercepts and, and they don't come, then you're you're right. In bad you get more money. So right. I wouldn't even right. put them in there. Yeah, that's right. fine. As long as and if they weren't in there, as long as our as long as we're at plan still. Right. right. That's that's only. Yeah, that's I, I wouldn't yeah. put. I wouldn't because intercepts are. You have no idea. Right. Right. The, yeah. The estimations on runs were made prior to us doing the intercepts. I mean, okay. so it wasn't part of that. Yeah. Our revenue. Our revenue um, was. Um, 
is five hundred fifty-three thousand six hundred seventy-nine thousand, and that's through May, and we should get another forty or fifty thousand. So um, we're about two hundred thousand carrying over retained earnings, and this is taking out our retained earnings to lower the budget this past year. So um, I think we're going to be fine. Um, we have a couple bills outstanding. Uh, Bay State Franklin hasn't sent us a couple bills for, uh, or, well, a couple months of worth of bills. And they average sometimes 70 bucks, sometimes, you know, $1,300. So, but on the average, it seems like it's 500 bucks. So um, do they know? I know I, Zach called them. And, yeah, and multiple we, times over Brenda multiple weeks. Brenda yeah. harassed them. They never sent us a bill. So it's probably um, you know fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars max and they'll probably roll it in, in 2018 because they know it's too late um, there's a 4999 DSL bill out um, so we are in really good shape um, I Great. think we're doing very well I, I had a quick question on um, you know with the equipment and stuff that we have are there certain calls that we make more money on than others when you say ALS call um, you know we're thinking private insurance so obviously we get paid on that stuff I know we have some yeah, quite a bit that's outstanding yeah, I, writing off a ton from Deerfield EMS um, um, from what I understand so I just wanted to make sure I just wondered if some calls you make more than others just as an education for me i didn't really uh, yeah absolutely i mean we an aos level call that requires that advanced training and those advanced skills is built at a higher rate okay um and then there's various levels it's um i don't want to use the term a la carte but there gets right. to be a certain point where if you administer more more than so many meds in one call it bumps it, it up to it. another rate just basically an indication of how complex yeah. that call was um, um, you would overdo something for somebody, but I just wondered, like, yeah. with the EKG machine on it yeah. and that kind of stuff, does that, you know, as opposed to a machine, you know, an ambulance that shows up without yeah. any of that. And and we also, we bill mileage as well. I mean, it's okay. not a lot, but it's a type of thing where if we have to transport a patient a further distance, say, to Bay State, it's yep. representative of us actually spending more time treating them, right. um, and therefore we actually bill higher because of the I higher see. mileage. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And the type of insurance depends on how much those bills are too. And Is that right? Back, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah well, like that, well our demographics, we have a good mix because we have a lot of private insurance. I remember we're you not were saying that before. Yeah. So good private. We're, we're actually much better off than a lot of communities. Um, our three communities because there are there is private insurance and I know we talked a lot about uh, or we've talked some about um, you know collections and I wondered how how that was panning out well actually know? that was one of my things oh, okay. I was hoping as a, a goal I know we're trying to have a write-off policy how's that working uh, I mean, have you have you gotten it sorted uh, out yeah we're 95 percent of the way okay. there. yeah well so once we get a write-off policy then um, I think we have about 300,000 in on, on um, outstanding receipts. So if there was a way, um, like I know Northampton, they have, um, they actually do follow up. So they have like in the high 90s, you know, in the mid 90s mm -hmm. as a collection rate. So um, I was hoping that we could sort out some kind of plan where people that were on duty and not doing anything, and especially this is one of those things that once we get into a new building, mm -hmm. it'll be so much easier. But we could get into the habit of having people make follow-up calls because it seems like the majority of the non-pays, I mean, some people die and it's not, it's just, you can't collect from the estates or whatever, the, um, but most of them are like mixed up numbers and stuff and like that. And that $300,000 you're speaking of is respective to Deerfield EMS? No, 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 this or is for, this is for, okay. this is for um, South County. Okay. The Deerfield yeah. EMS is separate. Okay, just, all right. Um, yeah, the part of the, part of my goal with that write-off policy is kind of, is to make as much of an objective standard and flow chart as possible. That during my research, um, talking with other agencies, um, it worried me how much subjectivity was involved in a lot of these agencies about, oh, well, we know them, they're a community member, and you know, uh, and my hope was that if it gets delegated to somebody else or it's reviewed by a subcommittee with, you know, anonymized whatever, we know that, you know, 
it's this situation and they were contacted and this was the result of that contact, so therefore we do X or a type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is giving people an opportunity to file for hardship and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all of those considerations associated with it, but to make sure that it's objective as possible. Um, and, that's, and that's my goal and that's why we're not totally finalized that. Uh, no, no, that's fine. I just felt it would be wonderful to have the personal outreach and to come up with, you know, a payment plan like Northampton does, they try to, you know, they don't want to send it out to the bill collectors. They, you know, and you try to work out the personal plan right. with each person, and that seems to have really worked for them. And I thought, geez, you know, that would be a good thing for us because, mm -hmm. you know, we had quite a bad experience with Deerfield Ambulance, mm -hmm. so we don't really need to set up us, you know, South County as right. another example of that. So um, that would be helpful. <clears throat> Tangentially related to this, do we have a line item for Medicaid revenue? No, it's all just revenue. We should probably, in my opinion, we should break down revenue by at least Medicaid because I think we would be very remiss if we didn't at least have an understanding of a forecast if I'm not Much sure we can get a breakout. Well, you got to be able. You, you got to know. You you have to have a a a, a big a code can do that for us. Because yeah. if where are you going with that? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm I'm trying to be politically delicate here. Okay. If, um, in okay. my opinion, the administration does what I think would be a disaster to to roll back the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid in Massachusetts will take, take a, a hit. Huge hit. And huge hit. if that happens, that I would assume, and I hope I'm wrong, I would assume it would impact our revenue stream. Yeah. And that means impact our budget. Now, if, whether we can do anything about it or not, that's not my point. Right. But we need to understand the it's consequences so that we can be ready. Right, so you'd know how much you, you take in a year and then you'd say, okay, if this gets cut by 50%. By 50 more, whatever it's gonna be, absolutely. Yeah. I was seriously worried about that. That's why I was such a, a crank this past year, but I'm really much more relaxed because I don't think it's, I, I, think I don't, I don't know. I don't, none of us have a political crystal ball. Yes, yes. yes. That, was, that, that's, that was an original study that was done and it's broken down what came from Medicaid, Medicare, yeah. private, private pay or insurance pay. That. In terms of estimation. It actually, no, it took actual dollars. They looked at the three departments and they, did, can give the and they, they came yeah, back and said, okay. It, and that's one of the reasons that they felt uh, South County was an advantage because we had relatively Good relatively place. smaller Medicaid, Medicare payments in most, most districts. Right. Um, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. It's so in, it's in, in, it's in the study. But, but now that we've got real numbers, we can compare that forecast with actual. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, we can. We can. And I think it's. I think it's really important. That makes sense. Well, there's another bill going around in the legislature that they're asking uh, the legislature to make a law that says to pay the patients instead of the carriers. That's going to be disastrous for. Oh yeah, service. no. Everybody's right. supposed to be calling in and saying no. Right, they're supposed to be. I know. How's so, that working out? <laughs> what? Is, uh, what? Is that? You need to call Steve and Stan. It, it's essentially it's saying, saying it's, 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 I, they're trying to get a bill passed in the state to pay the patients instead of the carriers. The so it's up to the, the patient oh, to pay us. Oh, yeah, no, that's going to make I wonder whether part of that is because patients have patients themselves have no idea what their medical costs are. It's like you, you go you go to you go to Big Y. You know how much your groceries cost. You go to Home Depot. You know how much your hardware costs. Oh, you you get medical costs. You have no idea. So I, I'm wondering. I don't know about it, but I'm wondering how, whether, how many that's a judge, whether, how many people do you think know how much their taxes are in town? Because they put it in an escrow. A lot of people they, pay they don't even real estate. Oh, I, 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 I get that. I, I, I totally get it. So how is the state going to, the state wants you to know what your medical bills are and they don't even care what your taxes are in the town? I, I'm just saying, that's a lot of people say that would be a part of the way of curbing medical costs because people would say, wait a second, I, why am I paying this? Because yeah, no one and questions and it. And an MRI might be, you know, 400 here and 200 here and 300 over here. And right. You just don't know. So I, I guess, I, I, again, that's less of my concern than I think we need a handle on the Medicaid impact or the potential Medicaid impact. And hopefully it's negligible, but we should know. 
Yeah, no, we have a good we have a good mix compared to other communities, and I do remember that conversation. So I, I think we can get the numbers from Comstar it, it, current numbers. Or 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 the there there must be a, a, a an accounting code we're tracking revenue. And there, there is certainly a, a, an accounting code for Medicaid, for Blue Cross, for I, there has, there has to. Be. Well, what happens when you fill out the form? You just put the insurance on your your forms, right? And and that goes to Comstar. But I'm get, think, someone's well, got to know. Yeah, I Comstar, Com Comstar, Comstar can provide a breakout of. Yeah. All the all the I'm different. I'm pretty sure. Things, I'd like to request that. I, I yeah, think no at problem. least so then we know. Then we can say, oh, okay, it won't be a big impact. The forecasts were actually like Tom after like Tom's predicting. You know. You know what, Zach? I'll work with you on that. And try I that. I I typically get end of year reports from them. It's one of the things I request, so I can just I'll request the latest one and provide it with the previous year, so we'll be able to compare and contrast. Yeah. And, and would, show that our way trends. we can do trending. Yeah. Actually, Jonathan, I don't think Medicaid's what we need to worry about. It's a lot of the other insurers, because we're going to get paid from Medicaid. You may only get a set amount for the thousand dollars. You may only get three hundred dollars. But it could go down. We get it. But it could go down. I know, but we're not sending a secondary bill out to the customer, the patient. No, but what I'm saying is, if if, if all of a sudden that let's say the average Medicaid payment has been three hundred. Oh, if it all went away, yeah. Or or got reduced because of the overall budget number is reduced. So I, I just, and, and, and maybe you're right that we don't have to worry about it, but I think we should know that we don't have to worry about it. Right, it's those system changes. Yeah, and the system's yeah. another. Yeah, but the more more information we have, John. Exactly, oh, yeah, absolutely. So I agree with you. So we'll just sort that out. Yeah. I wasn't worried about it, but that. I'm, I, I am, in. yeah, I'm, I really okay. am. Okay. Zach, did you have anything else on your report that you wanted to talk about? Uh, the last bit was just um, still working with the clerk's office at the town hall to streamline payroll submission. Um, we still, we're using our scheduling software. I can generate reports about, you know, exact hours worked and time off and things like that. Uh, we still have to by hand calculate gross earnings and submit that information to the clerk's office in a format that they can use um, so they can review it and enter into the payroll program. So I, we're just, it's still a little clunky. Um, it's getting better. Um, every payroll, we're ironing out the bugs, and uh, um, it's it's like changing a ship in the middle of the sea. We've got years doing it this way, so um, we're getting it. We'll work on it. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring up on the, from a financial point of view is we haven't changed over the other vehicles to Deerfield Insurance. At least we don't have them on our list. We have two on the insurance right now. I checked with Wendy this morning, and I reached out to... Um, Sunderland and I've heard back and we'll be finalizing that tomorrow after the okay. meeting okay. so the only reason I, it's a big deal is because if, if there was truly a liability kind of action, yeah, right. we would want them yep. to have no no issues yep. and also Sunderland is paying for extra. I know we're gonna we're gonna get asked for the baby <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. Oh, Tell them. No yeah. way. Tell Actually, them. Good luck. Cheap. Kip says, Kip I want says you it doesn't know work. it's very cheap, so that's why. Kip says it doesn't work. I, I, I thought there was a mistake. So, I don't know. It doesn't work. But no, anyway. no. What else we got, Mr. Chair? We need a couple of volunteers for a building subcommittee. Kip, you know something about that? I can do it. I'll do it. Okay. I like it. You like it? I make a motion Bob Ahern and uh, Kip Kamosa be our building committee. Second. Thank you for volunteering, um, Bobby. Any other discussion? Volunteer. Bobby, I'm begging for more discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's wonderful. And, I, you know, Thank hopefully you. we can move um, in and have no issues. I, I, I don't know, I don't know, but like furnishing, our, our town hall was furnished by a very generous gift from some company that was redoing their their office spaces so I don't know if, if mm. the committee wants but you know, maybe sending out a notice of some of the, the oh, local yeah. businesses that mm -hmm. you know you could put that on Facebook yeah yes. I, I, I mean at work I mean because people rather get rid of it or you know look even at the schools I mean yeah. school, you know I don't yeah, you know, schools are downsizing and stuff I mean 
Do they have extra stuff that they? And there's a second hand, uh, you know, off the, like this company, and I think it's in Holyoke. Oh, yeah. right. They buy all these, like you said, when people are remodeling, they have I've really have cheap stuff. stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, not cheap stuff, but just inexpensive with desk drawers and stuff like that. So and and again, water. until, yeah, you know, you may, want, you may want to use some of that stuff until you get to understand exactly what you need. You may want a couple of years to get, you know, to see how things are working before you go and invest in new stuff. You find out that's not really what you want. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of stuff put in storage because it didn't work. Right. Or some of the colleges have some stuff that maybe they want to get rid of. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to make sure it gets painted in a cheerful color. Yeah. <laughs> no pea no, green. No. Gray. No. No. Gray. No. 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 Well, they just legalized marijuana. Everybody's going to be happy anyways. <laughs> Any other business to go before the board? Motion. All right, do we want a meeting next month? I mean, we haven't had, not, we have had a meeting every month since, for the I think you're going to run you're into not going to break my heart. You're going to run into vacation issues with any of us in any yeah. given week. I mean, right. Gary called at the last minute and said he couldn't make it. Right. I mean, on the third and fourth, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We can skip until September. That's fine. Is that okay? If something comes up, I, I, I mean, good I, mean I, I know I'm going to be. I, I, I don't know what date specific, but I know I'll be taking a week off. What the heck? You just had a week off. <laughs> you get more than one before you were going to stay. I'll be taking a couple of weeks, probably. So, so Zach, is that okay? That's fine. You want to hear me? If you might see something show up and you need to get together, we get together. Wait, wait till September then? Yeah. Next meeting will be third Thursday in September. Third Thursday in September is the 21st. Sounds like a good day. That's the day we'll be here. Right. That's like the first day of fall or something. We may be in a new building by then. It's the autumn. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.